A blemish factor analysis is a very important exercise which needs to be conducted at the end of every season. This helps greatly in decision making for a pest management program for the following season. A blemish factor analysis effectively does four things. It comments on the pest and natural enemy trends observed through scouting during the course of the season. It also comments on the thresholds which have been applied by the farmer during the course of that season. Remember that thresholds, although many of them have been scientifically determined, there are others that are still in the process of development and it cannot just be assumed that thresholds will be identical in each different area. Thirdly, the blemish factor analysis comments on the success of the spray program applied during the season and it helps in establishing what sort of spray program to follow for the following season. A blemish factor analysis can be conducted either in the orchard or at the packhouse. However, there are problems associated with conducting this analysis at the packhouse. If fruit is delivered to the packhouse and a sample is taken from the picking bin at the packhouse, this sample is unlikely to be representative of the orchard as a whole. It is likely to represent only a small section of that orchard. And the second problem is that fruit is often pre-selected in the orchard. In other words, the worst blemished fruit, which is unlikely to make the export standard, will be thrown out in the orchard and won't even make it to the packhouse. It is therefore better to conduct such an analysis in the orchard. Growers or scouts should select 50 to 100 fruit per hectare at random and conduct the analysis on these fruit. The fruit can be analyzed while they are still hanging in the tree or the fruit can be picked and analyzed at a later stage. It is important that these fruit which are selected are not from just one section in an orchard, but they are representative of the entire orchard. Therefore, trees at random and fruit at random should be selected from throughout the orchard in a similar sort of formation as would be used for scouting. In other words, a diagonal line or a V line or a W shape. Every single blemish factor on the fruit should be noted and should be recorded. It should also be noted whether the blemish factor is just a minor a scarring or whether it is sufficient to downgrade the fruit for export. In order to be able to determine that, one needs to get hold of Citrus Research International's blemish standards booklet so that one can categorize what is acceptable and what is not acceptable for export. Blemish factors which should be recorded are factors such as wind, red scale, mealybug, creasing, thrips damage, and one can categorize this thrips damage as early damage or late damage or thrips scribbling, bud mite damage, bollworm damage, sooty mold, navel end splitting, fruit fly, false codling moth, and a range of mites, flat mite, rust mite, silver mite, and then other factors such as chemical burn. Here I've selected a few examples of thrips damage. This first one, for example, shows very severe thrips damage from early in the season when the fruit was still small Remember that all of the feeding early in the season occurs underneath the calyx. So the further that the damage has grown from the calyx, the earlier that damage was, was inflicted. The fact that there is no break in the damage from right up to the stem end, to far from the stem end, means that there was inadequate or no thrips control during the course of almost the entire early season. The second example shows just a ring of thrips damage, whereas between that ring and the stem end, it is clean. So at a fairly early stage during the season, thrips control was inadequate. Possibly scouting didn't pick up the presence of thrips early enough, or the product which was used wasn't effective enough, or reapplication of a product wasn't rapid enough. However, thereafter, it appears that thrips control was adequate. Both of these examples are probably likely to downgrade the fruit for export. This shows an even less severe case of thrips damage. 
just a single ring of damage which occurred for a very short period of time. This may or may not downgrade the fruit for export. And this example shows a very small sector of thrips damage and it is very unlikely that this would downgrade the fruit for export. Another example is late season thrips damage which now doesn't occur underneath the calyx but occurs on the side of the fruit and this is called thrips scribbling. And finally a fairly unusual form of thrips damage is damage around the navel end. Also clearly sufficient to cause downgrading of the fruit. This would also have occurred probably later on during the season. There are three different symptoms of bud mite damage on fruit. That is ridging around the calyx end, a general flattening of the fruit, and protrusion of the navel end on navel oranges. The information that is gathered when the fruit sample is inspected is entered on a form similar to this one. In this example, each block on the grid represents a fruit. For instance, this block is for the first fruit from data tree number three. Blemish codes are used to indicate the type of damage to the fruit. The code is entered in either the blemish column or the cull column, which is an indication of the severity of the damage. For instance, if the first fruit from data tree 3 has thrips damage that will downgrade it from export quality, T is entered in the blemish block for this fruit. If the second fruit from the same tree, for instance, is infested with a fruit fly larva, FF is entered into the cull column under this fruit because this type of damage means that the fruit has to be culled and cannot be sold at all. If a fruit has more than one type of blemish, the codes for all the different blemishes must be entered. For example, if the third fruit from data tree 3 has wind scarring, ballworm damage and navel end splitting, W and BW is entered into the blemish block for the fruit and NES in the cull block. If there is no damage to a fruit, a dash or line through the block is used as an indication. Once all the blocks have been completed, the numbers of blemishes and cull factors are added up and entered into the blocks at the bottom of the form. This information can be entered into a summary sheet along with information from other orchards, where it can be analysed further.